Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. My name is James Kent, and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager for the uh, MBA program here at China Europe International Business School. Uh, I hope you are well wherever you are in the world. I'm really excited to be uh, uh, joining you all online this evening uh, for the latest in our series of Industry 101 webinars where we invite a current student ambassador to share a little bit about his or her industry background and to offer some insights about uh, you know, fellow young professionals looking to build a career in that industry. Um, so we're really excited to be welcoming uh, MBA 2024 student ambassador Serena Lee uh, to join us uh, th this evening. Uh, I will just start the, the presentation and give you a bit of context about, you know, why Serena at our business school, CIBS, you know, is in the position to, to share, uh, you know, on this, uh, this topic, to share a bit about the, the program and a bit about our school. What I would say as well, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat box or the Q&A. And then after Serena's presentation, uh, we'll go ahead and go through as many of the questions uh, as, we, as we can. So without further ado, um, I say it, my name's, uh, my name's James. Um, so at this uh, business school, we're based in uh, the Shanghai campus, which is the, uh, which is the main campus of CEIBS. We're a global school uh, that was founded as a joint venture between the European Commission and the Chinese government in 1994. Uh, and since then, the school has uh, become more and more established and uh, we've grown our footprints of campuses across the world. So we have three in, uh, in China, uh, one on the shores of Lake Zurich in Switzerland, uh, and also a beautiful campus in uh, Accra, which is the capital of, of Ghana. Okay, uh, we now have over 26,000 alumni spread across the world, and all of these alumni have graduated from our degree programs, either MBA, or EMBA, or Global EMBA, <clears throat> uh, so we have quite a big reach across the, across the world. Um, apart from myself and uh, Serena, uh, the other uh, professionals that are, that are here are, of course, our faculty. So as a school, uh, we have nearly 80 full-time professors that are based in China. Uh, they're here because they, they teach, but they also research uh, and develop case studies about multinational companies in China and Chinese companies going global, uh, you know, to really play their part in, in China's uh, economic development story on the, on the global stage. Uh, so these are some of the faces that you'll see on campus if you came to do uh, an MBA program here. Uh, the MBA program is quite special. It's a full-time program designed for young to mid-career professionals who are looking to enhance their career development, to, to move into a new industry, uh, or to set up their, their own business. Okay, And it's basically 12 to 16 months out of the workforce where you're really retooling or rebuilding your CV uh, to put you in a better position to pursue your, your dream career, okay? I mentioned it takes place on the, the Shanghai campus. Um, it's also a very global program that I will go into and we're extremely highly ranked throughout the world by prestigious ranking authorities such as the Financial Times, Forbes, Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, the program itself, um, I could do this presentation in about 30 minutes, but I, I won't eat into Serena's time. But essentially, the program uh, can be broken down into three key elements. The first third of the program is where we take a deep dive in the, in the academic side. So everybody comes here and studies corporate finance, marketing, leadership. Um, these are the core modules, the building blocks of the MBA program that you'd find at any top tier MBA school around the world. The middle section is where we change gear and things become a little bit more interesting in that you can choose from a suite of electives, but you also go out uh, and work on strategy projects with companies based in Shanghai that the school has had a, a long term relationship with. Um, you also get to experience uh, life outside of Shanghai. We have a, a suite of China modules. Uh, we also have a suite of overseas electives, and actually our students will go to Japan in, uh, in, in June for the first time since the pandemic, which is great news for us all. At the end of this middle kind of experiential stage uh, is where the students get the opportunity to go on exchange. So you pursue most of your MBA with us here in Shanghai, in, uh, in Udong, but you also get the option to go to do a two to three month exchange at schools in the US, such as NYU Stern, Wharton, Kellogg, Chicago Booth, or if you prefer to go to Europe, uh, to the likes of ESA, INSEAD, HEC Paris, uh, 
London Business School uh, if you wanted to, or you can stay in, in Asia uh, to go to Singapore, Hong Kong, Korea, Japan. So lots of options to make your, your MBA experience here global. And you'll see a lot of our marketing messages are centered around this concept of China depth, global breadth. And it really means that the people that in, invest money in the, in, in the program that we have here, they either do it to give the students a deeper dive into China or a more of a, a global reach. Uh, in terms of the student body, uh, so typically uh, this is the average of the last few years, uh, but typically we take in between 120 and 150 students. Uh, on average, students have around six years work experience, and we also have a very high female uh, percentage on the on the program compared to our counterparts in uh, in the US and Europe. Um, and thankfully, we're very as I say we're a very global program. Everything takes place in English, um, which is why you know we're delighted to host actually uh, the first Industry 101 in, in English. Um, and it's at this time that I will hand over uh, the reins to Serena Lee, who will uh, share about career opportunities in the sports industry. So first of all, Serena, thanks very much for joining us. And uh, yeah, over to over to you. Yeah, thanks, James. Hi, everyone. I'm very glad to be here today and have the kind of opportunity to share some of the insights on the sports industry um, and as well as my personal professional uh, experience as well. Hope by the end of the session, um, you can walk away with some basic understanding of the industry and some of the inspirations of kind of potential career opportunities um, in the field. So um, let's get started. To understand a, uh, an industry, we often start by asking the question, um, what's the size of the industry or what's the size of the market? Um, so according to the report from the global, um, from the global uh, newswire, uh, the research and markets, so the, the sports industry revenue is expected to reach over 700 billion US dollars by 2026. Um, and at a uh, CAGR at 9%. So basically it's a huge market with a great potential. Um, and I also want to highlight the fact that though the outbreak of the, the pandemic um, acted a kind of um, a massive race strings on the sports market, in my view, it's actually pandemic and accelerated uh, the uh, innovation of the sports um, industry to some extent. So for example, the, the VR technology um, integration of the sports, uh, of the broadcastings or the development of the digital uh, fan engagement or kind of the active uh, integration uh, to, the, uh, to the entertainment sector as there are more and more sports documentaries alive. So for example, the top hit uh, will be the Netflix uh, and Formula One documentary, uh, Drive to Survive. Um, so I, I believe there's already five or six seasons um, available. So if you're interested, highly recommend it. It's a great, great sports documentary. So if you're interested in sports industry and would like to understand more about the behind the scene um, stories for Formula One, um, watch that. So uh, with all the advances in media, content delivery, interactive uh, and wearable technologies, there are so many incredible um, opportunities in the sports industry. So um, let's move on to the next slide on uh, to, to just indicate what are kind of the key components in the sports industry. Um, so we will basically um, focus on the traditional sports today um, as the ecosystem is very much well developed. Um, so here are some examples for each of the component. Um, I won't go into details for every component due to the conscious of time, but I will just highlight some of the, the relevant um, in this case. So for example, the, the leagues and competitions. And uh, so for the past years, and there is a rising tide of uh, international leagues and competitions to set up their local offices um, in China, as they reckon that there's a huge potential in the emerging market, like China market. Um, and for instance, the, the UFL, La Liga, Bonus Liga, NBA, UFC, and from the club side, uh, the PSG football clubs, they, um, they all develop their local presence um, in China uh, with the aim to have a better connection and better understanding to the local brands um, and fans. 
So as for the brands, um, I also want to highlight that it's not only for the sports brand that uh, it's Nike, Adidas or Under Armour, but also the brands who are actively involved as a partner. Um, so to engage with the sports fans and potential consumers through sports events um, and activations. So for example, here, um, Alibaba, uh, Visa and uh, Munio, they're the kind of the top uh, program um, sponsor of the IOC from the Olympics. And then the Opal, Hennigan, FedEx, um, there are kind of the global partners of the Champions League, um, just to give you an idea. Um, and agencies are kind of plays a role as an expert in the field, um, bracing mostly the brands, uh, players, and the sports leagues competitions. So basically to sum up, here is to give you an, um, an overview about the potential employers in the sports industry uh, to give you a basic idea. And in addition, on to the next slide, uh, we can see the top 20 uh, ranking from the global recruitment and sporting career platform. Um, I work in sports um, to showcase most of the track, uh, attractive uh, employers um, in sports. Uh, from the top 20 sports team um, till the top 20 sports marketing agencies. So just a very good reference for you to have. Um, and a note, uh, our special guest is also from one of the, the agencies uh, which has shortlisted on the ranking. So uh, we will be able to introduce her in a minute. Okay, so on to the next slide. Um, so we have a uh, basic understanding about what are the key players in the, in the industry. And then the questions will be how things work and uh, how the sectors interact uh, with each other, right? So the organizations, league, competition, teams, and clubs, as long as the players are um, like responsible for organizing the, the event and, and the media broadcasters um, and uh, the brands. So with the joint efforts with the broadcasters, the events can be basically de delivered to the, to the sports fans in the globe and then optimize the brand's exposure. Um, on the other side, for the sports fan, so sports fan watch the game, engage with the content on the social media, and bring backs to the value, so kind of the sports IP, and as well as the brand. Um, so on to the next slide, I will give you an example on to the, um, for the IOC. So in terms of the IOC revenue model, um, as an example, so we understand that IOC is a nonprofit um, or association or organizations committed to leading the Olympic movement and building a better world through sports. So that's basically their social responsibility, right? So um, as according to the IOC's audited um, financial statement here, um, the IOC's total revenue um, from 2017 to 2021 reached uh, seven seven point six billion US dollars. And as you can see um, here, the broadcasting rights and top uh, program commercial or marketing rights uh, basically are the two main revenue strings here uh, with the contribution with 61% and 30% uh, respectively. So to, again, and the IOC needs to fulfill the social responsibilities. Um, so the IOC distribution uh, distributed the Olympic movement about 4.2 million uh, USD every day, uh, according to their report. So this is um, this slide is mainly to tell us a to tell us the broadcasters and sponsors are kind of the key partners um, in sports entities. eye. Um, and meanwhile, the broadcasters also have a demand for high quality and eye catching content um, to kind of increase their viewerships and subscriptions. Um, usually the top uh, broadcasters, for example, being sports, will secure the exclusive, uh, exclusive media rights in their key regions to maintain their competitive advantage um, in the sector. Um, and again, there's already showcased a great level of career opportunities in the industry. It could be uh, organizations as IOCs or broadcasters um, like uh, Being Sports or NBC 
or agencies like Dentsu or the brands like Alibaba or Monyo. So um, we'll give you a bit of uh, a details in terms of the job functions in a minute uh, when sharing my kind of personal experience. So again, if you want to explore uh, from the organizational um, perspective, I believe IOC are still recruiting kind of volunteer uh, for the Paris 2024 Summer Olympics. So if you are interested and happen to also speaking French, um, so please feel free to kind of check out their website. Okay, so, all right. So hope you are not bored or overwhelmed uh, by the sharing yet. Um, I will then uh, share some of my personal experience um, like in the field. Uh, by starting answer the question, why sports? So on the next slide, so the question that why sports, why joining the sports is, um, I received uh, this questions very often, right, in China. Uh, when I say I worked in sports, a lot of people will get confused. They can't picture um, what kind of job function that you do uh, in, the, in the sports. Um, but um, now that you attended this session, so um, I hopefully next time when you meet someone work at the sports industry, uh, then you can better relate uh, and maybe start a conversation and build connections um, with that. And um, again, why sports? Uh, sports has always been my passion and for the for the for over six years, it's been my profession. And I play basketball since middle school and loved kind of the uncertainties of the sports, especially when the underdog takes over the game. Um, but after getting into the industry as an insider, um, I realized that there's um, there are much more in it uh, than just game itself. So my mission nowadays is to help more women to realize there are more opportunities in the, in the sports industry and also being a mentor to help them to navigate um, and unleash their uh, potential um, in the industry and ultimately to kind of bring more diversity and equality and uh, inclusion into the industry. So on to the next slide, uh, just basically a snapshot of my past journey uh, in, the, in the field. So my past journey is mainly sitting in the marketing agency sector. I started my career at Ali Sports, um, sports arm of Alibaba. I started there at the early days of Ali Sports, um, worked at international affairs and content collaborations. So mainly responsible to build a relationship with the uh, international sports federations so AKA the organizations that we previously touched on and help them to understand the market and advise kind of the content strategy from a local perspective. And for Wasserman, um, it's one of the top three uh, global sports marketing agencies in the world um, headquartered in LA. Um, we opened the first China office, um, and back then we have three main business pillars in, in China, um, and the first one is the talent management. So we leverage kind of the, the headquarters talent resources, uh, for example, as you can see the, the little icon there is, we have talents as uh, Derek Rose, Tracy McGrady, um, uh, Russell Westbrook, Clint Thompson. So our local office is mainly to bring the added value to our clients, um, for instance, uh, endorsement deal, and also to help them to maximize their brand image in the local uh, market through uh, both media, uh, both a digital or the China tours, some offline events. And then the second pillar is mainly um, for the sports consulting. So to give you an example, so one of the projects that we deliver is we help our aunt group, uh, the Alipay, to activate their kind of partnership with UEFA uh, regarding the national um, 
national teams competition. So we leverage kind of our in-house resources um, and expertise to provide a, a, a tailored solution to realize the Alipay's uh, goals. Um, I remember we delivered a commercial display in Portugal uh, during the finals uh, for Alipay. So, and then, um, during my tenure in team marketing um, in Switzerland, so as the exclusive commercial agency for UEFA's club competitions, um, so namely there's our Champions League um, and others club uh, competitions as well, I was mainly responsible for the sponsor partnership. Um, the stakeholders were basically UEFA um, and the partner, uh, for example, um, Hennigan, PlayStation, MasterCard, um, et cetera. And the challenge is kind of understanding um, your stakeholders and striking a balance um, so that everybody benefits. Um, and I think moving on to the key considerations to those who wanted to start a career in sports or who already in the sports industry who would like to advance um, and on the on to the next slide, uh, we will give you some key considerations. So mainly three points. Um, the first is the willingness to channel your um, passion to Korea, right? There's um, there are some trade offs. Um, so it's really important for you to kind of like think through and um, and then take the steps, or you can do a, a internship or volunteer in some of kind of the uh, the organization um, or the, the team and clubs to basically minimize your op, op, uh, opt uh, opportunity cost. Um, and then onto the second is to select the job function that fits you most. Um, so basically uh, we need to extend your forte um, to provide the added value to kind of the entity, but at the same time, maybe just to learn and grow um, your potential as well. So for instance, if you you have a background of the data uh, analyst, um, and then maybe also you're very interested in exploring the sports, then maybe the best fit for you is to kind of go to the insights department um, and go to the strategy as well. Um, so it's really, really depends on your kind of like own capabilities um, and then to seek your uh, position or job function in the in the sports industry. And then the second point um, is correlated with external factors. Um, it's not a surprise that the sports are kind of related um, to policies um, and as well as the geographic conflicts in a way. So that's so much it about the sports um, industry um, introduction. So I just want to maybe um, have a couple of minutes to explain uh, why I choose SIEBS and what kind of experience so far that I, um, my life in SIEB as well. Um, so for why SIEBS, I reckon um, that fundamental framework um, and knowledge from business school would definitely help us in terms of career advancement. Um, and then the more that you implement the business thinking to look at the industry as a whole um, and the better chance that you have a closer career goal and um, a, game, a game plan. So SIEPS, um, as James just um, introduced. So we have uh, the, the goal with the global breadth and um, China depth approach and to basically provide a, a platform for us to learn and practice and succeed. And courses like leadership journey and business stimulation uh, shares kind of the frameworks, um, um, how to become an effective leader um, and also unleash your leadership potentials. And we also have the student clubs that initiated by us, our students. And this year we have a new club called uh, Coffee Club. Um, it's very interesting. So, and then these students clubs are kind of the main goal is to um, keep an up-to-date, uh, like update onto the, the market trends um, to, to kind of update the, 
with the, the share with the classmates. And then the mentoring program is uh, to peer with the to peer you with the SEEPS alumni uh, with the M MBA students to kind of guide you through the MBA journey um, and often leads to a long lasting relationship between the mentor and the mentees. Um, and then on to the next slide, we will see there's some uh, seminar and forums um, like student led event TEDx and SEEPS. Um, and also we will have this year's TEDx SEEPS event, which will happen on the May 27th on campus. And then the next picture that showcase one of our women's in leadership forum um, that will enable us to kind of share thoughts and build networks. And I, there's also one um, key portion that's not on a slice, but I want to reiterate is our CDC. So the Korea Development um, uh, Center was, has an extensive resources to kind of help our students to make the career plan and land a dream job, um, hopefully a post MBA. So, some, some of my personal experience sharing. So I have been in the MBA uh, program for, for, this, for the past six months um, and such an amazing experience and to be kind of the students again. And the most importantly um, to, is to link my past experience um, with the framework that I learned from the class to kind of reflect and also it helps me um, to make a better judgment and have more confidence um, as a leader in the future. So I think this is very, very important for me. Um, and that's also one of the reasons that I uh, choose to join SEEPS. So, um, so much for one women show at this point. Um, I'm very honored um, and privileged to welcome our special guest, um, Melody the vice president of the, the Sports 5 Greater China, who is also a uh, SEEPS alumni. Hello, Natalie. Hello. Hi, Serena. Can you hear me? How are you? I'm good. That was an excellent description and introduction on sports business. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, I reckon it's a Sunday night, um, and I really, really appreciate that your um, effort and your commitment to kind of join our session. Um, and maybe for the um, for the benefits for our audience, can you please introduce yourself um, so that everyone just know a bit of uh, about your background um, and who you are? Um, sure. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm Melody, I'm from Sport5, one of the highlighted uh, global sports marketing agencies that Serena just introduced. And I'm also a very proud SEEPS alumni. And um, um, just to quickly introduce myself, um, just same as Serena, I work in sports. Um, um, I think this year marks my, I think, 15th year working in sports industry and um, actually very lucky to have been involved um, with like Beijing Olympics and Paralympic Games back in 2008 and then 2010 Guangzhou Asian Games, uh, different WTA, a women's tennis events in China, Harlem Globetrotters, um, uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships and Wimbledon's and Volvo Ocean, Ocean Race alike. Um, so as um, VP of Sales and Marketing at Sport5 China, I oversee a team of around 40 uh, team members and um, just providing day-to-day um, -day service to our rice holder clients and brand clients. So when I mention rice holder clients, they um, include um, a premium global um, powerhouse football clubs like Manchester United and Atletico de Madrid. It also includes um, very excellent Chinese brands going global like Oppo and Hisense. Um, and also um, 
also like I support on a daily basis our teams in collaborating and co like cooperating with our global commercial teams on supporting the commercialization of our global let's call it clients for example like Chelsea Football Club, New York Knicks, LA Lakers, Boston Marathon and League of Legends alike. So that's pretty much like like in in a few minutes like what Sport Five does. Um, in China and globally. Wow, that's um, that's a lot. And I just wondering whether you have time um, to sleep and have some rest. That's a lot of <laughs> a, a accomplishment and achievements that you did for the past 15 years. Um, so the next question, I, I believe you already answered, is just want, wanted you to kind of share some of the highlight moments of your career and that you I kind of sort of uh, already baked into some of your answers in the previous questions. So, mm -hmm. but I think one of uh, the the next questions I am really curious to to understand is what mm -hmm. kind of capabilities do you mm -hmm. think the sports marketer should equip? Mm -hmm. Um, Serena, this is actually a great question. It's very difficult to answer. Like I've spent quite some time on, on this question. Um, I think if you are a sports fan, you would understand that being a sports business practitioner is such, essentially you need to be a good storyteller because um, you are like you are selling and you are promoting that experience instead of a tangible product like a water or a smartphone to your consumers. Um, you are actually selling that experience, that passion, that spirit that transcends borders to broadcasters like um, uh, NBC and CCTV5 and also to, to brand clients like, yeah, uh, like, like Alibaba, like um, Alipay and Open, Heisen's, uh, Heineken alike. Um, so if you only like you are so well versed in how sports is you are a good sports fan like you are like a hardcore sports fan but if you want to become a successful sports marketer you will need to be able to translate that experience to convert that experience to um rights and entitlements that your brand clients can really benefit from when partnering up with global rest holders, um, regardless of the rest holders are athletes like Kaka or Neymar Jr. or um, a major tournament like you have a Champions League or FIFA World Cup. And mm -hmm. how you can actually um, kind of uh, like convert that passion of sports and really have a fundamental business thinking of connecting the dots between the rights offered by the rights holders to um, different functional areas from that brand client side, being CSR initiatives, B2B collaborate, collaborations, um, kind of uh, promoting the, the uh, elevating their branding power and promoting their like seasonal or products or services. These are actually um, like, um, like kind of the uh, fundamentals of how you can uh, like success successfully market your properties or rest holders to uh, to grant clients and with this being said I think being a uh, trying to like being a su successful sports marketer means that you need to be equipped with that fundamental um, business thinking that Serena actually uh, pointed out earlier and this is why I feel being a proud um, SEEPS alumni that gives me that has continuously given me um, a, a different way of thinking it equips me with um, the opportunities of understanding what companies, other than in sports industries, what those companies value, what are their challenges and opportunities, especially in this uh, geopolitical um, uh, today world, and what kind of their um, value addition to their consumers, what do they um, uh, like focus on from, from their supply chain to their digital channels, what, how they function on a daily basis. Only when you are equipped with this ever um, changing and fast paced uh, uh, like environment of doing business from other uh, brands or industries perspective, then you can really um, 
find out that strong association or a powerful association between the rest holder, the sports rest holder that you represent uh, with the uh, other brand clients that you want to bring value to. I know that I'm talking through a sports business perspective. It might sound a little bit deep if you're not a sports practitioner, but uh, I'm sure that Serena understands being like working closely uh, on a UFA Champions League project before when you were in team marketing, you, you, you know what, like what that kind of a challenge and what kind of a gap like a sports marketer needs to bridge. Yeah, absolutely. As I, I can feel like the fundamentally, um, that it's very, very uh, good that you have a passion for sports. I think that is the kind of the fundamental thing. And I can feel the maladies uh, passion, not only for sports, but also for sports business. Um, mm -hmm. From, from the screen. So I think that's that's uh, that's one thing. And the other thing is um, kind of summarize that what you just said is one of the, the storytelling uh, skills is kind of, you think one of the, um, the, uh, the capabilities that a sports marketer needs to equip. Um, and then uh, kind of the business thinking and business critical thinkings um, and the capabilities kind of connecting the dots uh, between the stakeholders and striking the balance uh, between or among the different stakeholders is also the kind of fundamental uh, capabilities that you think it's uh, it's important for them to equip, right? So um, yeah. I think the next question is more of the um, the outlook. So mm -hmm. what kind of the talent? So like my in my view, so for, mm -hmm. for the industry to involve. And um, there needs to be a lot of like different diversity or uh, kind of talents into the industry. So what kind of talents um, in the, what, what kind of talents the industry will need to involve? Mm. Um, Serena, my question might be a little bit like, it's it comes from a different angle like it comes from like my, my my own angle that might differ from like others if you ask other like sports practitioners i think if you look at linkedin you see all those skill sets that you need to equip yourself with if you're if you want to focus your career uh into specific areas areas like um like digital marketing or or creatives or uh, marketing communications, or if you want to ladder up uh, to the leadership role, you need to equip yourself with the, the leadership skill, the project management, people management. Like from my view, all of these skill sets are given um, mm -hmm. because like it's a lifelong learning process for everyone. Um, you, like you use the word talent in your question. I think you are a talent. Me, myself, I'm a talent. Um, all of the um, uh, like audience tuning in, whether you work in sports or not, you are a talent for your industry. So I think all of those skill sets in a way is a given if you want to excel. Um, but like the, the way that I want to answer your question is being a Chinese sports business practitioner, um, I see a talent that is needed for this industry to evolve includes two uh, two parts. The first part is being a Chinese who's passionate about sports, who, 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 who's, who's a sports business practitioner, especially during this, um, I think we are now living in one of the darkest moments of our own China sports industries. Um, I, like, I think you don't, please do not like uh, give up hope. Um, even though we're reaching down to the bottoms with all the um, news ongoing every day from basketball to football and um, with all of those, um, if you compare China's sports commercialization level to Western world, we're still like in infancy. But I think what this industry needs is talent who have global view with local experts who never give up on on this industry and who will continue to give back to this industry so that um we can really make this industry better especially that you're actually coming back to china uh, with your great experiences working and learning from a, like from like us or, or europe 
uh, in sports marketing. So that's part one, being a Chinese um, sports business practitioner. The part number two is being a Chinese sports business practitioner, looking at a global level, looking at the global sports business, how we can um, be a good communicator and good facilitator in really bridging the gap between the East and the West by using your talent, using your wisdom, using the um, your your um, conflict like resolution skills and your resilience to really have um, to bring out the Chinese voice um, in the global sporting arena, uh, not necessarily on the pitch or on the court, but also uh, in the in the business side. I think this kind of talents is also needed. We need more talents like this to represent China power. And it's so much more than speaking fluent English while being a sports fan. So I think that's uh, <laughs> my answer to this question. Absolutely. I think it's a fantastic answer. I can't I can't answer it uh, much better than yours, I think. It's just, um, um, yeah, I totally agree. And uh, I think it's the for, for the dark time um, as the external environment. I, I would say it's it's a it's a it's a good sign actually because I, I think it's it's because of the more attention from the public into the sports in a way. Like for example, for the basketball or for football, is there's a more attention from the sports mm. fans. Um, so that will make the kind of uh, the the um, official level to make certain um, practice. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good sign to kind of lead our mm -hmm. uh, Chinese sports industry in a more positive mm -hmm. and more in the right direction. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that's absolutely, um, it's just only my view. Um, and then the, for, for the next question, um, and since you're a, a female leader, a women leader, so I think maybe, and also you have like 15 years in, in experience in industry, what's your advice or career suggestions um, to the women who is, who is interested in joining the industry? Um, and yeah, I really, really want to uh, mm. hope to have your take on this. Yeah. Mm. I think first off, if you're a woman and if you're interested in joining the sports industry, you're probably you're probably a sports fan already. Um, so I think you could for sure relate to that goose bumping moment that like the never settle spirit of sports to become your better self every day. Um, I think um, with that kind of spirits um, represented by sports in your belly is kind of already a good foundation for your career success, if not, if I'm not being modest. Um, secondly, from, on the suggestion part, um, if you're just starting off your career, um, don't um, give yourself too much limit um, on the roles that you might take. Um, it's just like what Serena shared earlier in her slides, she was sharing all different levels of um, and areas of functions in sports industries. You can try to be a, a digital editor. You can try to work on events, doing event operations. You can try to uh, work on marketing communications uh, from, uh, from, from the rights holder side, but also from, from the brand side. You can even do refereeing. You can work for broadcasters. You can challenge yourself to be a, a salesperson. Just never limit yourself on all of these options, especially you're starting off your career. Um, I, I think like being a um, like a, a seasoned practi practitioner, if I can say this to myself, I think throughout the years you will realize whether you are you work in China or you work in uh, other markets globally in, in sports, you will find that women have always been the minorities uh, in sports industry, especially in the boardroom. I think how to kind of practice your, 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 your women leadership and how to pay forward to those who are just like you, um, a female who have a passion in sports and who try to look kind of um, 
reach out to that gap glass ceiling. I, I think uh, this is a joint effort of all of our uh, our uh, women sports practitioners. And, and I think um, the, the last point that I can think of is in, in a like, like even though that you you work in sports where you were going to work in sports it's still essentially a, a corporate world so never let what others words define what your limits are you are your only kind of boss to define your limits i think that's um kind of the suggestion that i can give to um the young generations who are you know, vener venturing into sports Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melody. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great, great um, suggestions and recommendations, especially coming from a woman who has um, in the industry and who has a lot of years experience. Um, so I guess um, that will be it for, for the question from my part. Um, but I'm not really sure, like James, uh, do we have any questions um from from the poll from the from the public that um me and melody can take together uh sure that's uh thank you very much um uh both of you and, and melody um you know both of you but very much enjoyed your your sharing so thanks very much for your your insights if anybody does have any questions please uh drop them in the chat box or the q a and i will help to to moderate um, but with you both online, uh, maybe I will just kind of start with some questions that that, that, <clears throat> that came to mind from both of your presentations. Um, I guess in no particular order. So, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, for the, the audience, if they, you know, if they volunteer or they get that chance to break into the sports industry, right? And they've been mm -hmm. called for an interview in sports marketing or one of the, the many roles. You know, when when you're at that interview and, and probably as a very you know passionate sports fan, any tips for how to approach that that interview? And you mentioned Melody the importance of storytelling, which I, I really resonate with. I'm just thinking that you know, for me, I'm a passionate football fan. If I ever got the chance to say have an interview at my home football club, I, I think I would find it difficult to kind of you know separate the kind of the professional sports practitioner with the the fanboy who you know really really loves this this club um I, I hope I'm not being too reductionist with my question but I guess it would be interesting you know how you'd approach you know people kind of uh facing that very first interview uh if, if both of you have some in insights that would be great yeah uh I think I can share some of the uh uh, my experience during the interview, right? So uh, I, I think it's a very, very valid question, James. So I reckon that if you go to the interview with your favorite fo football team, um, yeah, things will be get pretty excited. Um, so I think for, for us, um, if you are a hardcore uh, sports fan, just don't shy away to show that your passion uh, for the sports and maybe just to um, just uh, just to watch out for not being show off uh, for kind of the professional knowledge um, in a way, um, and then trying to kind of stay uh, stay calm. And then um, maybe some of the uh, some of the the entities or interviewer thinking the sports knowledge is not mandatory, but also it's good to have. So it's a plus. So I think for, for their mentality is that it's okay that you don't equip a certain amount of sports knowledge because it's most importantly is your um, ability to navigate uh, or manage kind of the stakeholders and be creative, be proactive. Um, and all, of course, the most important thing is be honest and be decency. Because these are kind of the true values that interviewers kind of in sports, they, they value. Um, and um, in terms of the sports knowledge, um, again, it's, a, it's good to have. And, um, and it's also very easy, quickly to pick up during the day-to-day um, -day job. So I just don't, don't think that, um, oh, I, I just don't apply this opportunity because I, I don't have the equivalent kind of the sports knowledge. I think Serena had 
with the fantastic, the perfect answer already. If I can just add my two cents here, um, just to share two points from more of an kind of life stories point of view. Um, yes, like in our office, as you can imagine, we have a lot of um, football fans uh, in our office. Some of them are Manchester United fans and we actually, um, we are the uh, digital agency for Manchester United in China, operating all of their digital platforms in China. I think every time when we have our quarterly, quarterly review or like bi-weekly review with Manchester United, uh, headquarters um, in Manchester and also like colleagues Dalian call, from Hong Kong. I think that sense of that sense of self consciousness, kind of dividing yourself from kind of compartmentalizing your emotions from a fan uh, as a fan to being like a professional, doing knowing what you need to do um, professionally um, at work. I think. Um, that I think that kind of the uh, is the uh, uh, how to say um, the fundamental difference of being a sports practitioner than um, uh, with, with a sports fan. Another example um, when um, like I was leading the team um, working on Hyson's creative activation surrounding FIFA World Cup last year uh, in Dubai and Doha uh, for, for for two months time. Um, we have a team of about five or six people on site, and we helped um, Kaka. We facilitated the partnership between Kaka and Hisense. We invited the the like the the, the, the famous um, like football legend Kaka on site to Hisense events, uh, like interacting like with I think thousands of football fans and Hisense consumers. And when you, when you have Kaka standing by you, you can for sure feel that starstruck power if you're a football fan. But at the same time, you know how you need to behave and how you need to deliver to your clients to really give all of the thousands of fans the best experience that never they've ever had presented by Hisense, um, a, a, pr a proud Chinese home appliance uh, brand who's the uh, official FIFA, FIFA World Cup sponsor and who's bringing this kind of um, big football star to their consumers in the Middle East so close by. And you need to for sure deliver, you need to work on project management, you need to make sure Kaka arrives on time and having fantastic experiences with the other, with the host and all, all, all the fans. I think that, yeah, just two live ex examples just on top of what Serena said to give our audience some like a real taste of our life. That's great. Thank you very much for your insights, both. My my football team's a lot smaller than Manchester United, and uh, we have a very small fan base and could use all the help we uh, we can get. So uh, if you're ever approached by Coventry City, Melody, please uh, help <laughs> us to uh, expand into the China market. Um, the, the next uh, question, I, I've got this anonymously, um, so maybe some of these are a little bit shy, but um, you know, asking about the, the kind of the, the impact of, of, of esports, right? And I think, um, obviously, Serena, you mentioned this is kind of focused on traditional sports. Sports. Melody, you mentioned your presentation. I think you work with, uh, I think, with League of Legends. Just wondering, from a you know, from a talent or career perspective, you know, are we talking about kind of two very separate industries with separate kind of you know skills or kind of career developments, or, or do you think there are? Do you get people kind of jumping between, or do you think that they're kind, they'll kind of merge into into one? Um, yeah. Any any thoughts on on, on that or the impact of uh, esports to the kind of uh, Yes, Melody. Yeah. yeah, can you please take this question as you have more experience in that? Yeah. Um, so in our office, we have um, a team of three um, acting as our esports unit in Sport Five China office, and the the leader of our esports business in China actually came from. Uh, you used to work for an esports club, um, an, an LPL club in China. So he's essentially a gamer, and all the other two are like real gamers. I cannot say that I'm a gamer, but like, like, like they're like really swag and in, in, in a really like cool way. Um, I think the reason that Sport Five is able to attract this kind of talents is not only because we're stepping into the uh, commercialization of esports 
uh, properties globally, but also um, we have the experiences, the learnings and all the successful cases of supporting traditional sports commercialization globally and regionally. And all of these esports slash gamer talents, um, they like in comparison to tra traditional sports, esports still quite young industry and they're growing so fast and learning faster. They're in a way copying all the essentially like like the, the the great commercial structuring sponsorships tiers all of those um experiences on how to tearing up your sponsorship or like the packages of a traditional sports they're learning everything so i think it's a, it's a, it's it's how to say there's for sure layover uh, but sports uh, but esports and gamers are learning a lot from traditional sports which have been here for more than i think 200 years in terms of commercial commercialization which is uh, which makes sense and from for traditional sports sport, uh, sports business practitioners learning and experiencing how uh, a live streaming of esports games or tournaments is interacting with the young generations, the generation Gen Z is also important because like we need to continue evolution, like continue the evolution of broadcasting techniques and how we interact with fans and how we create the fan experiences either physically or behind the screens. So I think it's uh, like, like mutually beneficial. Oh, that's it. That's a really interesting point. And I guess we've, we've kind of seen that with, you know, more of the kind of World Cups or Olympics in recent years with kind of smaller, you know, bite sized videos and kind of more, you know, kind of uh, eyeballs on the YouTube channel, you know, compared to kind of the, the traditional broadcast. Um, I, I think maybe I've got uh, maybe two two questions, if that's OK. Uh, Serena, maybe I can kind of um, tag you back in for, for this one. You mentioned, uh, obviously, that you're a mentor to, to females kind of in, in the getting into the, the industry to be a, a sports business practitioner. Um, Melody also mentioned that in many ways, the sports industry in China is in its infancy. I, I just wonder from a diversity perspective, um, you know, do, is it, I guess, do you, is it similar in terms of kind of diversity, uh, kind of, you know, male, female uh, parity in China compared to kind of overseas when you worked overseas? Or do you do you kind of see it at a similar level, something that still needs to be improved? Or, you know, is it is it kind of much better than it, it is over overseas? Um, I, I can I can maybe share some quickly share of my experience in um, in the previous in um, team marketing because um, that I based in Switzerland and Luzerne so I really really love kind of the work environment and that is because um, in in the organization we have a lot of initiatives uh, around and to tackle and to tackle some of the uh, the DEI and we have a DEI kind of workforce in place and we we do have realized uh, actually I've, I've, I can share some interesting story is we actually initiated a activities. Um, it's a very small, it's called, um, um, you, you can't say hi guys, because the guys is not a very neutral neutral um, word. So we, we encourage people to say hi everyone and hi team um, to, to keep and to basically consciously to remind yourself about the gender equality. And um, people or the coworkers who fail to say hi everyone instead of uh, instead of to say hi guys, and they will be fined at a um, certain amount of money and into our activity pool. So I think it's a very fun activity, but still, like um, I I think the small steps will uh, matters, and so it will it will just maybe train you to consciously um to to actively do things uh towards a better outcome interesting uh thank you um maybe in the the, the interest of of time um my, my final question is the most serious one of the night and that would be who is going to win the champions league this year serena <laughs> who do you think i have to stay neutral um this <laughs> this year because yeah i can't i can't basically say what's what's who's to win but i'm just curious who do you want to 
uh, see holding the trophy this year? Well, uh, I, I, I would hope it comes comes back to, to England and, and Man City, but um, let's, uh, yeah, let's see. They also play in Sky Blue like my team. So if I pretend, I kind of think that Coventry City are winning the Champions League. But um, yeah, uh, anyway, it's, I guess, good to stay neutral, right? In case you never know what opportunities are going are gonna to come on the horizon. Um, maybe uh, Serena and Melody, kind of, you know, final closing words, if there's any kind of final message to say to the, the audience tonight. Um, um, no, uh, is the melody still there? Um, I can, I can kick in first. Sure. Um, so, so I think first of all, thank you so much everyone, um, for, for tuning in and stay, um, here for about an hour and sacrifice some of your, you know, weekend time and to join us. I really, really appreciate your time and hopefully, um, um, like you can still walk away with some of the uh, general insights about the sports industry, as well as um, SEEPS is um, very, very number one as uh, schools in Asia. So just take that in mind as well. Um, and I will just maybe pass the floor to Melody um, for her to um, wrap up. I think in, um, in China, whenever you mention sports, um, the first instinct um, from a lot of people would be um, like you're talking about an athlete or talking about a, a specific game or a match, but it, there's so much more uh, behind the word sports and it's really, really fun. And it's actually a very um, interesting and fulfilling career. Uh, even though you are not that athletic, you don't need to be an athlete to, to be working in sports. And, um, and it actually can, uh, in a way, um, if you work in sports, you have an opportunity to to really see the world from different angles and to be able to 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 be empowered with that spirit of connecting the East and the West and to um to really fulfilling that kind of um, feeling of being a world citizen because sports is beyond borders. It transcends borders. I think that has that collective celebration of um, human beings is, is essentially what we um, what we love about. Um, so don't feel afraid of the the word when you like um, meet someone who's working in sports. Uh, we don't bite, and we are actually fun people. And seeps is great. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, beautiful sentiments to end on. Thank you very much, both. And you know, I completely agree in terms of uh, you know, kind of humanity, kind of celebrating together. Right? It brings people together. You know, beyond uh, transcending borders. Um, I, I couldn't think of a better better message to to end on. Well, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of uh, the, the diminishing hours of the weekend, and um, I'll follow up with everybody who, who joined this webinar by email, uh, just with some kind of um, uh, some summary notes uh, this week and hope to see some of you on campus in the future. Uh, and also once again, thank you to our two speakers today, to Serena and Melody. Thanks both. Thank you, James. Thank you thank everyone. You. Have a great rest of your night and weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.